so uh, I don't know because we do not have enough <laughs> stuff here. So let us try to practice a little bit about what we learned about quadratic. Uh, sorry, about squaring rule and conjugate rule. So, so you know that we had these formulas, a plus b squared <coughs> is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And I also told you that there is another version for this, which is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. <coughs> And these are called conjugate, sorry, the squaring rules. And we also had one more, which is the conjugate rule. So a plus b, a minus b, is equal to a squared minus b squared. Yes? Okay, but I told you that the message behind the formulas are important. So <clears throat> this tells you that if you have two numbers, you add them and you want to square it, then this becomes the first one squared plus two times the first one times the second one plus the second one squared. Okay? And something like this here. But here, if I have two numbers, once added, once subtracted, and then I want to multiply them, the answer is the first one squared minus the second one squared. I hope that you remember which one is the first one the one that comes first in the one with subtraction. Okay, but these are more powerful than this. So what happens, a natural question here is that, yes, you told me what happens if I want to square the sum of two numbers, but what if I want to square the sum of three numbers? Okay, so let us say that I am for some reason interested in calculating this. Yes. So what can I do? Of course, one way, this is not directly this formula because this is the sum of three numbers squared. One way to do it is say that, okay, I do not have any formula for it. So what can I do? I can write it two times, multiply them. This is possible. And then you can continue this multiplication, a by a, a by b, a by c, and b by a, b by b, b by c, and then start adding them up. Okay? But one other way is, is it possible to use this somehow to find this as well? This is what I want you to learn. It is, the answer is positive. Even though this is the sum of three numbers, this formula is useful if I have the sum of two numbers, but the sum of three numbers can also be viewed as the sum of two numbers. Yes? For example, if I say 2 plus 3 plus 4, this is the sum of three numbers. But you can imagine this sum to be one number and then add it to 4. So then every three num uh, uh, the sum of every three numbers can be viewed as the sum of two numbers by putting two of them in one pair of brackets and considering the same, the one number, yes? So that is the trick I want you to know, and this is a very useful trick from now on. Okay, so if I want to do it, one way to do it is this, to imagine that A and B together are one single number, and then plus C, and then to the power of Still, I have the sum of three numbers, but putting them in one pair of brackets gives me the opportunity to consider them one single number. Now, can I use this formula for this by considering this as one number and this as my second number? And this is why I am uh, it is important to read the message behind the formula. So what do you say here? You say that I have two numbers. One of them is this big one. The other one is that one. The message is the first one squared. So what's the first one squared? The first one is what? A plus B squared. And then two times the first one, times the second one, yes? And plus the second one squared, yes? But now again, when I ask you to simplify or expand, you have to get rid of all pairs of brackets. 
So can I do something for this one? Yes, that is exactly my formula. So what can I write? It becomes the first one squared plus two times the first one times the second one plus the second one squared. But there is another pair of brackets I have to get rid of. But there is no formula for that. Then I have to multiply. There is no other way. But I multiply two from the left, c from the right. It is so simple I can do it in one step. So it becomes 2ac. And then it becomes 2bc. And then finally c squared. So I was able to expand that. And if you are patient enough and start multiplying this three terms here, three terms here, it becomes nine terms. And then if you add the similar ones, you will get this one. In some books, I mean, when I was at your age, in my education system, we also had this formula as an, another identity. But anyway, if, so this is why it is for the people who are interested in knowing more. So this is also an identity. It becomes the first one squared, the second one squared, the third one squared, you see, the first one squared, the second one squared, the third one squared. And then I have two times the first one times the second one, 2AB, plus two times the first one times the third one, plus two times the second one times the third one. But this is not in your lesson, so you don't need to memorize it or even work with it. But I want you to understand this is not just one single formula only working for this one. So if you expand your, uh, your imagination, you can use this idea to even solve that. For example, let us say that if I have the sum of four numbers, okay, so I want to write a plus b plus c plus d to power 2. Do you have any idea what to do? Two sums, yes? So I can combine A and B as one number, C and D as one number. Then I will have, because this, is, this has only one message. The message behind this is I want to square the sum of two numbers. If you want to use this, you have to have two numbers added. Here I have four numbers added. But again, four numbers added can be viewed as two numbers in one group, two numbers in one group, then added. Okay? So this I can imagine that I can write it as A plus B in one group, and then C plus D. First of all, I want you to feel that what I am doing is possible. Yes, do you understand that this equality is valid? Because what is written here is exactly the same as here. I don't know. Okay. Okay, now you help me. Now, which formula I will use, do you think? The first. The first one. Yes? So what I can do, I can write the first. You see, you need to read the message. The first one squared. What is the first one here? A plus B. Yes? And then two times the first one, which is A plus B, times the second one, which is C plus D. Yes? And then plus the second one squared. Okay? But again, I can use this idea once for the first one and once for the last one but in the middle one there is no choice i have to multiply do not have any pro formula for that so let us just do that everyone hopefully knows this this becomes the first one squared two times the first one times the second one plus the second one squared okay the last one is also simple what is that the first one squared two times the first one times the second one plus the second one and for the middle one, I do not have any options except multiplying. Okay, for multiplying them, so you can, so because there are three numbers to be multiplied, you can keep two, multiply these two first. It becomes AC plus AD plus BC plus BD. And then you multiply two in. Okay? But let us write it more organized. So I have a squared, if you don't mind, let me write first, b squared, and then I have c squared and d squared, let me write them here. And then I have 2ab here. If I multiply 2 in, I will have 2ac. If I multiply 2 in, 
uh, I will have 2AB. If I multiply 2 in, I will have 2BC. If I multiply 2 in, I will have 2BD. And finally, one term here, 2C. That's the answer. That's the answer. Okay? So that is the whole point. You might say, why should I learn this? Because if I want to calculate this, even because <laughs> instead of thinking and be creative, I can just simply write A plus B plus C plus D times A plus B plus C plus D. And then this is four terms, four terms. In total, I will have 16 terms. And then I simplify it. Yeah, that's okay. But I would recommend you this part of the lesson is important and you will benefit it a lot in the future lessons. So for this one, even though, of course, you can find the answer, not for the exam, but because in the exam, I prevent you from doing this by writing it, use the rules. But uh, in the future, that's up to you. If you want to do it because of not being creative or think a little bit to be creative to do it faster. I want you to understand the patterns. By practicing, you will try to understand the patterns. So is that clear? So that's one thing. Another thing, for example, let us give you some examples of this one. Don't think that this is always uh, for two numbers and two numbers. The pattern is important. Yes. For example, do you think I can use this, the conjugate rule to solve this problem? So you, in the beginning, oops. in the beginning, you might you might say that no. This is not this pattern, because in this pattern, I need two numbers added, the same two numbers subtracted, and then I want to have multiplication. But in this problem that you offer, I have three numbers, two of them added, one of them is subtracted, or something like that. So that is not exactly this pattern. But if you be a little bit creative, you can immediately realize, yes, that can be also viewed as this pattern. Yes. Perhaps you can do pair of brackets around the BC on both sides. Not BC. Not BC. Your idea is correct. So what you are saying is that put a pair of brackets here and there. If I put a pair of brackets there, it becomes A B plus C and then A plus again B minus C. Yes. So for conjugate pattern, I have a plus sign between my numbers and a negative sign between the same pair of numbers. So that's not the case. So the idea of grouping is correct, but this grouping is not working. Yes, so what can I do? Which groups, which grouping will work? Yes? A and B together. Yes, so you can view this. I make it a little bit bigger pair of brackets. These, this pair of brackets is this one. This pair of bracket is this one, but here in my head, you don't really no need to do that if you understand, but I want to write that you are really understand what's going on. I put A and B in one group together, and of course I will have a plus C here, yes? And then A plus B is the same group, and then what do I have now? Minus C. And then, now, can you see the pattern? That is the conjugate pattern. Uh, is there any question? Is that understandable? So, A plus B, here and there, is playing the role of this little a. Yes? And this C, here and there, is playing the role of this B. So, and then, you know this. So, you, you actually try to write it in a way that you can see the conjugate pattern. Whenever you see the conjugate pattern, you have this in your memory, hopefully. The answer becomes what? What is the message? The message is the first one squared minus the second one squared. Okay, so what's the first one here? A plus B squared minus the second one squared. But the problem is not finished because still I have a pair of brackets left. But immediately you, f you find another pattern here. What's the pattern? The first one. The first one. Yeah, so it becomes the first one squared plus two times the first one times the second one plus the second one squared, and then you have a minus c squared. So that's it. So I was able to use this to find. Yes? 
Okay, so let's make it a little bit harder, okay? So for example, do you think that I can somehow do this? First of all, if that is going to be a pattern, you should ignore this pattern and that pattern for the time being. For these two patterns, I need the power of two, which I don't have here. Yes? Uh, it works. What? It works. Yes, how? Uh, you put that by, uh, so let me write brackets. right here. I put a pair of brackets here. Yes. Okay, so what is your suggestion? Uh, A plus B. A plus B, one group. Exactly. Yes. Plus and pair of brackets, C uh -huh. plus B. Yes. No, but I want to. Uh, I want to make sure that you really understand. So, what should I do here? Minus. C minus B. Okay, so you missed. That is, that was my intuition. So this is not correct, but you were very close. Yes, this one is completely. So when I put equality. I have to respect the meaning of equality, okay? So this one you did is exactly equal to this one. But is what you said here is exactly equal to this one? This is one problem. And if even if it is, then I am in trouble. Why? Because for the conjugate rule, I need exactly two numbers added and the same two numbers subtracted. If this is going to be the case, I have this number, yes, that is the same number, but this number and that number are different. So, so then it means that even if this is right, then I cannot use the conjugate rule. But do you see how can fix it? First of all, do you see that this is wrong yourself? This part is completely correct, but this one is not equal to this one because I told you, when you multiply this minus sign here, this minus sign becomes minus C, which is correct. And then this minus sign will multiply that. It becomes plus D. So what you have written here is A plus B minus C plus D. This is what you have written, which is not this one. Yes? So that's one mistake. And that is good that it is a mistake. Because if this is true, then we cannot continue. You see, this is not the conjugate pattern. So... How can I fix it? Yes? Change the C and D to plus. plus. Both of them will be plus. Yes? Because now this goes minus C. This minus sign also goes there and it becomes minus D. And now it is equal to that. Yes? But now can you see the conjugate pattern? So I have two numbers. Yes? Once added once subtracted and then i am multiplying them so what happens it becomes the first one squared what is the first one squared is a plus b squared minus the second one squared sorry okay now it's the problem is not finished yet because i still i have two pairs of brackets left so what do you think i will do i will use which rule now only this rule once here once there but there's still some students may mess up this minus sign so be careful okay so what i will do if you don't mind let me still keep my pairs of brackets and put the answers there so what is the answer to this one is the first one squared plus two times the first one times the second one squared and then plus the second one squared here the first one squared two times the first one times the second one plus the second one squared. Now that everything is in order, I remove my pairs of brackets. Here, I don't need to be very careful because nothing is behind that. I just take it off. But for the second one, what should I write? Minus. Minus C squared then. Don't say plus. Minus. How many times I say this minus goes for all of them? Yes? Yeah, you need to 
decide that you will not make these mistakes ever. You know when they take Aula, so it would be hard. I don't know if it is recording. So and then so this minus sign goes here. This minus sign also goes there, and then this minus sign also goes here. And that's your problem. And is there something that I can simplify? No, that's the end of the problem. Yes. So I just want you to expand your point of view so that these formulas that we learn are not just limited for this case. Yes. Okay, so for example, let me So let me ask your opinion uh, about this. What do you think I will do this to do it faster? So a plus b squared, and then I want to multiply it by a minus b squared. Okay? So what do you think would be a good way to do it? Is there a minus? This is plus, this is minus, this is product. Oh. So what do you think is a good idea? Yes? Yeah, first and the second. If you do that, then you have to multiply. Yes? We can do that. That is because you told me this, I will follow yours. Okay? Because still there are some points I want to reveal here. So what you said is that I will use the first rule for the first part, of course, it becomes a squared plus what? 2ab plus b squared. Yes. And then for the second one, you have what? a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. That is not wrong, so everything is right. But do you know, uh, if I want to continue, one way is, of course, multiplying. Okay? But I want you to use the patterns as much as you possible. Do you have any suggestions for me? What can I do here instead of multiplying them? Can I still use some of these patterns? Yes? You can put pair of brackets out 2AB plus B squared on both sides and you can use the conjugate rule. No, still you are missing. So what you said, let me repeat, this is a common mistake. This damn minus sign is killing me for 30 years of teaching mathematics. Okay, I will probably have given up people learn that. Okay, so when you say I put a pair of brackets around them, so this is what you mean? I, or I understood you wrong. This is what you mean? Okay, and then if you put a pair of brackets where? If you want to put it here, if you meant this, I just warn you, this is wrong here. And then, I, this is the only reason that I'm saying, you have to be aware and conscious about your mistake. Then you will learn, okay? So, I, do you agree that this is not correct? Because this minus sign goes for the first one, that is correct. But it also goes for the second one, makes it negative, but that's not negative. So at least this way of grouping is not correct. This is not hard to see. Okay, so don't do this mistake. If you don't do the mistake, it means that you have progressed at least one step. Okay, you have to decide, promise to yourself, I will not make that mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this method of grouping is not working. But is there any other way of grouping that works? Because if there are no patterns, then I have to multiply. There is no other way. Yes? I put that pair of brackets between a squared plus 2ab and a squared minus 2ab. Okay, if I do that, there is no pattern. That is, that is not wrong. What you said is this, yes? Is that, if my understanding is correct? Did you mean that? Yes. Okay. But yes, that's, that is a correct grouping. That's not wrong, but it is not helpful. Do you see the pattern, any, any pattern coming after that? Because definitely it should be something like this, because I'm multiplying two things, one thing, two things. But I need the same two numbers 
and then the second, the same two second numbers. Your second numbers are the same, but your first numbers are not the same. And above that, I have one, both of them are positive. I want the plus or the negatives. Yes. Can you use Omar's method to do the, do the conjugate rule below when you multiply the first, the first pair of brackets? Yes, you can. So if you want to take this one and multiply this one. But try to make it more efficient. So that's not an efficient grouping, I would say. Yes? So it, because uh, it needs a little bit of experience, but it is not hard because you insist to keep the order. Okay? A squared plus 2AB plus B squared can also be written as A squared plus B squared and plus 2AB. Okay? I want to write this uh, so that you understand. So I would write A squared plus B squared in one group. Yes? And then I have plus 2AB. First of all, I want you to understand what I did for this one is correct. Yes? I just took these two, put them in one. And then 2AB. What I have written here is exactly this one. Yes, do you agree? And now can you tell me what I will do for the next one? I think you have some kind of hint now. A squared. I, again, I group them together. Yes, but minus. Now again, do you agree what I have written here is exactly that one? So. But why this grouping? That grouping that you also told here is correct. But now this grouping is better. Now can you see that this is immediately the conjugate pattern? Why? Because I have two numbers. One of them is this one, and the other one is this one. Once added, the same two numbers once subtracted, and then I want to multiply it. Yes? So that, what, that kind of grouping was useful. So what can I do now? It becomes the first one squared, but what is my first one? My first one itself is this guy, squared, and then minus the second one, squared. But I have to remove all pairs of brackets, so what I can do here, this one is which rule? The first one, but A squared is playing the role of A, B squared is playing the role of B. So what happens, it becomes the first one squared, it becomes a to the fourth, two times the first one times the second one, it becomes 2a squared, b squared, yes? And then the second one squared is b to the fourth. But what is the answer to the second one? Two times a times b squared. What is that rule? This is math 1c lesson. What can I write for 2AB squared? Hello? Yes? 4A squared B squared, don't doubt, because I told you the formula works for product, not for addition. So it becomes minus 2 to power 2, 4, A to power 2A squared, B to power 2B squared, yes? But you shouldn't stop here because accidentally I have two terms that are similar. So what is the answer? It becomes a to the fourth minus what? 2a squared b squared plus b to the fourth. And that is your answer. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. But this is not an efficient way to do it. This is not an efficient way to do it. There is a better way to do it. From the very beginning, because Omar told me this, I followed his. I mean, still, it's good. If you can do, if you understand this method yourself, it means that you progressed a lot in understanding the patterns. But can you go back, forget about this method, and then see that is there any other way that I can do that, which is faster? I would say you will see. Okay. So the reason is that you don't know because this is why I'm saying formula sheet is a bad thing because if you really rely on that then you you're not that creative because you don't have them in your memory what you want to do so if I ask you if I ask you what can I write forget about that 
I give you a squared times b squared. Forget about everything, just concentrate here. Can I write something for it? We had it in Math 1C. What can I write in front of it? I have two powers with the same exponents. So what can I do? I can write AB to power 2. If you have weakness understanding these things fast, you need to fix it somehow. If you are interested to progress in mathematics. Every one of you should see this under, uh, as a, uh, in milliseconds. Is that clear now? Okay. Now, why do you think I brought this up? How this is relevant to that one? So I will write my question once again here. So it becomes a plus b to the power of 2 multiplied by a minus b to the power of 2. That's my question. How this problem is relevant to what I said right now? Yes? Uh, you can use uh, what you said. So tell me what to write in front of it. So you can write oh, I a squared plus a. No. no. Nicole, no. No. do you want to say something? Exactly. So why don't you do that? This here, this a plus b is playing the role of capital A. This a minus b is playing the role of capital B. Okay. So I have, I have a pair of brackets. I have a power of two. What is playing the role of capital A? A plus b. What is playing the role of capital B? A minus B. Yes? Uh, this is, I don't know, this is for some reason in Sweden, people have troubles, troubles understanding these things fast. Uh, yes? Because this is the only reason. If you don't have this in your memory, you don't know what to do with it. So that's why I'm saying, don't <laughs> underestimate the role of memory when you are actually studying. Actually, one person, one psychologist, actually, if I remember, defined IQ to somehow how, how fast, how, we, how much we can memorize and how fast we can retrieve our memory. Yeah, might be that is not a complete definition of IQ, but I just want to tell you that memory plays a really vital role in problem solving. Okay. Okay, first of all, I hope that at least I could convince you that this is correct. Yes? Okay, now can you see any kind of patterns revealed itself? Yes, yeah. yeah, so what is that? The conjugate rule within the pair of brackets. So what's the answer? So I keep these two pairs of brackets, I copy and paste the power of two because I have decided to manipulate the, the, the one inside. So what is the answer? Yes. And now, is there any other pattern that you can see which, which is useful for this yeah. one? The second. Yes. So it becomes the first one squared, which is a to the fourth. Two times the first one times the second one, which with uh, the one sign is negative. And plus the second one squared. And this is your answer much faster. Okay. So that is why. I want you to see. The, by the way, one thing is that you, you should like it. If you like it, if you don't like it, just stick to the book and get rid of the high school and finish it. Okay. But if you like it, then of course you will get excited. If you get excited, there are some dopamines actually secreted in your body and it will help you to remember it because you want to enjoy more. Yes. Anyway, so I hope that you agree with me that this method is more efficient than that one. Because I was able to do it in three steps here, one, two, three, four, and then the fifth step. Yes? So, this is why I want you to train your brain to catch the patterns. If what do you think about this one? Uh, if I give you, uh, if I give you the square root of two, the square root of three minus the square root of two multiplied by a square root of 3 plus a square root of 2. Okay, what is the answer to this? 
Do you see any pattern useful for this numerical calculation? Of course, if you have your calculator, you can punch these numbers, but the calculator will always give you approximate values because the square root of three and square root of two are irrational, so the decimals go forever. No, just what what pattern do you see here? Um, the, the last one. Yes? So what's the answer? It's the first one squared. Which one is the first one? The one that comes first in the one with subtraction. So this becomes this one squared minus the second one squared. Yes? Okay, but everyone hopefully knows what is the answer to the first one? Three minus two. Three minus two. So the answer is exactly one. So if you multiply this number by that number, the answer is exactly one, not approximately one. Okay, and then you had some problems because last geometry problem, the last problem, more or less none of you could solve it correctly. Okay, because that was the problem, I don't remember exactly. But there was an, a triangle whose height... So let me solve that one. Uh, there was a geometry problem in the last exam and the last question. I ask you, you have a quadrilateral, yes, so I don't remember exactly. I remember that it was a quadrilateral triangle, yes, and if I remember, oh, okay, I, I ask you to find the area of, a, of an equilateral triangle whose height is this number. And I ask you to write it to find the exact value in its simplest possible form. It reveals that how, we, how much you are weak in numerical calculations. And this is very important when you go to Math 3C and if you want to take Math 4. So you have to be good in calculating exact values. Yeah. So equilateral triangle is a triangle whose all sides are equal. And I have given you the height. The height is this number. And I ask you to find the area. Okay, so what should you do? You want to find the area. Again, how do you think? I see that area is wanted. I remember the formula for the area of a triangle, or I think I can read it from the formula sheet. So what's the formula? Base times height. So base times height divided by? This is the area, okay? Do I have access to height? Yes. It's given to me. So my duty is very simple now. Just find the base. Yes? Huh? You can use cosinus. Because you know that it's... Uh, it's I, I know. So you used cosinus. But you couldn't, you, you couldn't find the exact value. Hmm. Yes? I don't remember exactly what you did. But the point is that you want to find this one. Okay? Yes. Uh, isn't it? So my intention was not cosinus, but cosinus was also correct. If you can manage to find the final answer exactly. But what I would say, I would say that if I, I don't know the base, but let us say that the length of this is x. The length of this one will also be x. So the length here will be x over 2. And then I am looking for x. So which formula becomes important here? The Pythagoras theorem. Yes? So the Pythagoras theorem will tell me that this one squared is equal to what? This one squared plus this one squared. Many of you had problems to understand how to square this number. Yes? Okay. But this one, I would write x squared. This one is x squared divided by 4. Okay, tell me, what is this number? Hmm? Well, you see, you, this, is, this is a matter of confusion. We had this in math 1c, in the very beginning. So the problem is that you don't know how to manage this one. And the calculator is not useful here. 
because I have asked you to find the exact value in its simplest possible form. So even if you have the calculator in front of you, it is not useful. And by, by the way, for this exam, you had access to the calculator. So what is the answer to this one? So what is the meaning of this number? This means 3 to the power of 1 over 4. Yes? And then if I ask you, what is this number to power 2? This becomes this number to power 2. Yes? But what is the answer to this one? Yes? Uh, yes, why? Because we had a rule that I write 3 and then I multiply these two. So it becomes 3 to the power of 1 half. But what is 3 to the power 1 half? It's the square root of 3. So, I mean, you should be very quick in understanding these things. I mean, if I ask you what is this 1 to power 2, the answer is simply square root of 3. Okay? So that was why I gave it 1.5 A points, because my point was to be able to calculate this. And I knew that most of you will not. And actually, even one of you didn't do that. Some of you used the cosine formula or something like that. I will also explain that for you. But I hope that you understand. This is important to know. When you go to Math 2C, understanding that this number is equal to that number shouldn't be hard for you. If you find it hard, it means that you have forgotten something or you don't understood your lesson very well. Okay, now let us put it back in there. So, it becomes just a square root of? Yes? And then I multiply everything by 4. What happens? Because why I multiply by 4? Because I am looking for x and I have fractions. And that is one advice for you always. That if you have fractions and equations, get rid of fractions. So I multiply everything by 4. 4 times the square root of 3. I move this to the other side. It becomes 3x squared is equal to 4 square root of 3 and then it means that x squared is what? 4 square root of 3 divided by 3. Of course, if I ask you what is x, what is x? Uh, x is the square root of that number. Okay, so let us keep it for the time being and go back here. What is my base here? My base is also x. Yes? And then I, what do I have? I have my height, which is the fourth root of 3, and then divided by 2. So I have to take this x and put it here, then I will have my formula. Okay? Yes? Okay, but my point is that, first of all, how many of you can see that this number is equal to this number. So for, I mean, these kinds of calculations shouldn't be hard. Do you see that this is equal to this? Okay, if not, you, this is something that you have to learn. Because a, a, a 3 can be viewed as a square root of 3 times the square root of 3. And this one and that one are cancelled, so I get 1 over the square root of 3. So this is a, a very important pattern, it is good to have it, you know. Square root of A over A is always equal to 1 over the square root of A. These are not in the formula sheet, you will learn them by experience. Yes? Okay, so here I can continue and write 4 over square root of 3. Yes? But then what is my x? x becomes the square root of this one, which is 2. Okay, then again, I want to test your understanding. What is this one? Because it was the square root of 3, I am taking another square root of 3. What is, so this is my question, the square root of, square root of 3. One, 
Yes. Yes, exactly, because what is the meaning of this? You know, this becomes a square root. This is 3 to power 1 over 2, yes? And then because of this square root, you write what is here and then put another one half up there. Yes? So what happens? One half will be multiplied by one half, which becomes one fourth. But if I want to write this using the radical sign, what should I write? The fourth root of three. So you need to have these kind of calculations comfortable for you. The second root of the second root of three is the fourth root of three. Yes? So then what happens here? Yes? And then put it here. So x is this number. But let me also test your understanding. This, this is x multiplied by that. And then divided by 2. What is this answer? Yes, John? Which is? 1. So the answer is 1. So the area of this triangle is one area units. Exactly. The idea that you use for cosinus is also correct. Okay, because it might be you did like this. So because this triangle is an equilateral triangle, so this angle is how much? The bigger angle is 60, and then you divide it by 2, it becomes 30. And then you immediately realize, because your question is this one, and the height is that one, you can use the cosine rule. So the cosine of 30 is what? The cosine of 30 is what is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Yes? Listen, hello. But then x is what? x is the fourth root of 3 divided by cosine of 30. You had access to this, but if you punch this in the calculator, it gives you a very long number. So it, it is not the exact value. So this is why, even though this method is completely correct, but to get the exact value, this is not useful. Yes? So that's why I didn't consider that as the full mark, I think. But anyway, these kind of calculations should be uh, simple for you. If it is not, you need to practice and learn if your goal is to understand mathematics more simply. So any questions so far? Okay, let me all ask you another question, which is related to uh, patterns and numbers. Okay, so let me ask you to calculate this number. Uh, let me write this one for you. Uh, 2 plus 1 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 multiplied by 2 to the power of 4 plus 1 multiplied by 2 to the power of uh, 8 plus 1. I want you to show that this is equal to 2 to the power of 16 minus 1. Okay, listen to me. Hello. So you want to show this, and you don't have access to the calculator. So in that case, it is not that simple, because 2 plus 1 is simple. 3, this is 5, this is 17, this is 257. And if you don't have calculator, you have to multiply 3 by 5 by 17 by 257. Even if you manage to do that, then 2 to the power of 16 minus 1 is very hard to because you have to multiply 2 by itself 16 times. If you multiply 10 times, it becomes 10, 1024. Multiply it 11 times, it becomes, I don't know, 2048, 4096, and then it goes up and up. Okay, so I want you to understand that you cannot do it without calculator unless you are really stubborn and sit down and turn up a candle and sit down and then just use like the people. They were crazy at that time. I don't know how they have calculated this. If you have seen the Kepler calculations, 
because Kepler was able to realize that the orbit around the Sun for the Earth is not a precise circle and he realized that it is an ellipse but the deviation of that ellipse from the circle is very mini uh, very minor I don't know if you have seen his calculations they didn't have enough good paper in their hand they didn't have pens they have to put the pen there and then do the calculations by hand on a rough paper but he was able to understand that the pad, the, the orbit is actually an ellipse. Don't talk. Yes? Yes. Uh, this is, is a little bit unrelated. You said 2 to the power of 8 is 257, I think. But how can a uh, even number or not? No, I said that plus 1 is 257. Okay, so what, do you have any idea how to do it? So you have, this is just a puzzle. You want to see, and you have enough knowledge. If you learned what I told you, good. And of course, you have to be creative here. So it doesn't matter, you just learned what I told you, good. Because I think most of you learned what I told. But still, you have to be creative to use what you learned to solve a new problem. And that is why mathematics is important, because it will give you the opportunity to increase your problem-solving skills which will be useful if you want to get a good job in the future no matter if you are going to be a chemist a biologist or I don't know a computer scientist you, you need to know solve to solve a problem okay uh, when I, I when I saw this problem I really enjoyed when I was at your age of course I was a little bit smaller but <laughs> So somehow you know that I am giving you an example relevant to our lesson topic, yes, which is identity. But apparently there is nothing here similar to the uh, identities that we have. Because first of all, I do not have a power of two up outside the bracket so that I can use this. On the other hand, this conjugate pattern is also not very easily seen. Because for conjugate pattern, at least I need something with a minus sign. Of course, I have a minus sign on the right-hand side, but my point is to... Uh, right. So, by the way, if you ask me what this number is, I don't know. If you ask me what this number is, I don't know. The whole point is that without knowing the value of the left and the right, I claim that they are equal, whatever they are. Any idea? Yeah, think a little bit because I want to give you a hint if you couldn't. And that's the only way that you can learn problem. First think, if you get stuck, get a hint from me and then continue. If you get a stuck, another hint, continue. So to learn something, you have to be stubborn. Exactly when you wanted to learn how to walk when you was just a kid. How many times you fell, you can ask your parents, but you were stubborn and then you learned. Yes. Do you have any idea? I don't know if it's a If you divide uh, two to the power of two plus one with that number, then you do two to the power of four plus one, and then two to the power of eight plus one. Like you divide them one after one, and then in the end, uh, maybe you get like. Uh, no, if you divide, you mean divide by two plus one? No, no, no. Uh, two to the power of two plus one. Like you divide that to the other side. And like oh, you take this one to the other side by yeah. dividing. Yeah, and then you do it to the, uh, to the power of 4 and to the power of 8. Okay, then what happens? Then, uh, so then you will have this one yeah. on top, divided by these three in the bottom. Yeah. And then this is left on the yeah, left. And, uh, and then, of course, you have to convince yourself that number that you constructed in that way is 3. Yeah. But is that easy? No, that is not wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. Might be it is right. Might be you find a way to work to work it out. I don't know. Yes, Omar. Uh, maybe factorize. Factorize this one. Uh, no. Or that one. Yes. This is already factorized. Factorize means right as a product, and it's already a product. 
Yes? Can we factorize the 2 to the power 16? Yeah, we can factorize it, but let us do it later. Because factorization is the lesson that is going to come. So, yeah. Yes? Any other ideas? I, I, my recommendation is to start from the left hand side which is more complicated and try to find a way to simplify it so that you can reach to the right side. Yeah. So my question is, my, my method usually is this. So I start from the left hand side. So I would, this, the left hand side is this one, yes? And then I want you to find a way so that you can go and reach to this one. By the way, let me ask you one thing. Is it good to start multiplying things? Yes, I will, in principle, it might work, but there is one indication it's not going to work. Why? There is a limit. Yes, because if you, still, if you are stubborn and start multiplying them out, do you agree because all of these signs are positive? all signs will remain positive. And it will not work because I will have a negative sign there. So this is, one, this is an observation that tells you don't be stubborn because some of the students don't care, start doing things until the very end and then say that it doesn't work. But just by looking at the problem, you realize that let us rule out multiplication out of the table. Why? Because if I multiply, everything will be positive. At least I need a negative sign. So there is no point in multiply, multiplication. The trick is very interesting. I mean, this is the reason that I'm telling you this. Because after this one, this is an aha moment. So this, you need to remember this aha moment so that hopefully you can use it in the future. And the aha moment, I want first of all write something here. You might be surprised. The left hand side is this. So the person who actually designed the problem had this in mind. First of all, tell me, do you agree with what I have written? Apparently this is different from this one because the left hand side is just that one. But I wrote something there. I cannot just put something there on my wish. Yes, yes. Is that right, by the way? Yes, because it's just one. It's just one. So the person who actually designed the question was very creative, okay? He just put 2 minus 1 there. The left-hand side is this one, I agree with you, but the left-hand side can also be written in that way. Why? Because this 2 minus 1 is just what? Is 1. And if you multiply this by 1, it remains the same. Yes or no? Yes. Okay? But you might say, why this is useful? You need to wait and see why this is useful. The other question is that how can I come up with this idea? I don't know. Because if I know, I could have taught that myself and solved my own problems that I couldn't solve. So creativity is a reality. Okay, So you have to train to be creative. Some part of it you can acquire. Some part of it is unfairness in life. Yes. Yes, but now you understand, yes? yes? The only thing that the teacher can explain is to explain, understand the method. The teacher cannot explain how to understand, how to solve. Of course, I can give you some hints, but at the end it will not work. Because if I knew how to solve all problems, of course I could have solved my own problems, yes? Okay. Now, do you know... Why this is useful? Why? Because you see the conjugate pattern at least here. Okay? So what's the conjugate rule tells me here to do? 2 to the power of 2 minus... 2 to the power of 2 minus... 1 to the power of 2, which is 1. So these two can be combined into one single pair of brackets. The rest of it, I have to copy and paste. Why? Because I put equality, I have to respect the meaning. Yes? Yes or no? Okay, but can you see another pattern emerging? So these two now becomes conjugate pattern. So what's the answer? The first one is squared. 
The first one is this one. The squared is what? 2 to the power of 4. So it becomes 2 to the power of 4 minus 1 to the power of 2. But what is 1 to the power 2? Just simply 1. And then I have to copy and paste the rest. Yes or no? Hmm? You have questions? No, I just want to... Yes. And then what happens again? Another conjugate pattern. So it becomes the first one squared, which is 2 to power 8 minus 1. And then 2 to power 8 plus 1. And finally, the answer is another conjugate pattern. So it becomes 2 to the power of 16 minus 1. And that is equal to the right-hand side. So you have to actually enjoy the pro not have to but if you are interested in math you will enjoy the problem yes so this part putting this there by hand first of all it is valid it is legal in the world of mathematics you don't get the ticket for it because you are doing something legal and this will solve your problem and these are not easy but if you are interested you have to start solving harder and harder problems and it will bring you some kind of joy you know joy Anyway, this is one problem that I wanted to tell you. I don't know, we can practice more. Because next lesson I continue and then of course... I, you know that I have also a YouTube channel called Dr. Bobak, yes? I have written it in that way. <laughs> Yes, uh, there is a playlist there. If you are interested in these hard type of problems, uh, there is a playlist called Advanced High School and College Algebra. Okay, that's exactly at the right level of you. And if you go to that playlist, I teach something. Below the uh, video, you get a PDF file for practice. And then the next video, I solve those problems. And it continues this pattern. So if you are interested, about learning more about identities and things like that and these kinds of problems to exercise your brain just switch to that uh, video youtube channel and then go to the playlist i think the name is advanced high school algebra or advanced college algebra don't think that this is really advanced so these kind of things look advanced here these are very simple things, yes. Are in college like 20 to 24 year olds? Like yeah, in, in US, college means university. Yes. But I don't know. Forget about that, yes. Just go and solve. But I just want you to know the format. I teach something for nearly one hour, two hours. And then below, it, below the video in the descriptions, if you open it up, you get a PDF file, which are Demand, which are challenging problems that you can solve using that lecture and the next video is the solution to the problems of that uh, PDF file and it continues like that at least you can follow the first two or three of them which is relevant to our lesson yes that's my design yes I wanted to make a logo or something so. And it worked because the next day that I did that, my students say that, okay, there is something wrong with your YouTube channel. The words are messy. The letters are messy. So it, I was able to uh, catch the eyes, yes. Anyway, so let me now uh, see what type of problems we can solve. So, so I think I will stop here. Do you know when the lesson ends? Uh, 10. 10. Okay, you can start working on your own because I do not have access to what I need. And I hope that I can make this video and upload it. If not, we will lose it.